Hello, this is Terry from Fabric Junction, and today I'm going to show you a quilt as you go technique called Fun and Done. With this technique, we use a tool that's called a batting buddy. There's two pieces to this tool. How we use it is in this fashion. We take our back fabric, this is going to be the back of our quilt, and we need to cut squares that are the same size as this tool. And what I do is I lay it out, I lay my ruler, and then I cut. Once I have a strip cut, then it's very easy for me to make the squares. When I'm using this to cut, a lot of times I'll set the inside piece in place and it'll help stabilize my cutting. So with this, you need to cut as many squares as your pattern calls for. And I just go right down my strip, cutting my back squares. Once I have my back squares cut, then I cut my batting. And this time, I go through my scraps of batting, and I try to use them up, and we use the solid square from the center. So then I place it to see where I can get my best use and the easiest cut. And once I have it in place, again, it's my guide for cutting. So I go through and I get all my batting squares cut. Once I have those, the only other thing left is for me to cut the pieces for the quilt that I'll be working on. Today I'm showing you one, it's one of the easiest ones, all of the patterns are easy, but today I'm showing you the easy diamond, and this is what it looks like when it's finished. So it's done with strips. And now I'll show you how we did that. Here is my back, which is, has been cut, and I lay this on the back, that way I don't have to measure when I take my batting and place it in here. Once I have it placed, I pin it and I draw a line. The um, pattern will tell you whether or not your pieces are going to be placed on the center or a quarter inch. These are a quarter inch, so I just move over a quarter inch, put a light line on there. Once I have the line on there, which I don't need that particular one, I line up my two strips that I'm going to work with. I put right sides together, I line them up with the line, and I stitch, and I stitch starting right at this point and I stitch all the way and I stop. You do not want to go beyond. You want to make sure you stay on the batting and you want to start and stop on the batting. Once I have that stitched and I use my uh, regular machine with my regular foot but if you have problems with these layers go ahead and use your walking foot. As you can see here, here's where I have stitched starting and stopping then you press it and after you press then you continue adding the pieces that are in your pattern as you can see this one is shorter I still start and stop at the batting and I continue to press open once I get down to the edge I'll have a square that I will set here Again, sew and press. 
what, now I have all my pieces in place. So the next step is to trim them, because as you can see, we have more than we need. So you take it, and from the back, roll this back out of your way. Now you'll use your batting as your guide. You'll place your tool, or your straight edge, excuse me, line it up with the batting, and cut. When you do, it'll look like this. You'll have some nice, clean edges. That's your goal. So make sure you tip the back far enough out of your way. And if you've sewn too close to the edge, you might need to loosen a stitch. But you need to get the batting out of, or the backing out of your way as you continue to cut. Once you have them all trimmed, you need to sew them together. And how we do that is we take our two pieces back to back, find your point, and stick a pin straight through. And line up on the other side the same way. Because now we don't want to sew on our batting or the top fabric. We only want to sew on the back. So you would stick a pin in each side and this is where you will change to your zipper foot. Don't be scared just because it's called a zipper foot. Because our goal here is to sew as close to this edge as we possibly can. And the zipper foot helps you line up. So sew nice and close to that edge without getting on the top or the batting. Once you have done that, you open it up and you'll have two pieces looking at you like this. This is where we take care of all the raw edges on our quilt. Fold the edge over twice. Fold it once to get rid of the raw edge here and then fold it over top of your top section. Stitch right close to the edge to create that seam. Now you'll continue doing this for your whole row and then as you make your rows you'll actually do the same thing. You'll take your pieces once again and you'll pin them all together. This one here will be rolled this way. Now you just need to roll them each direction. When you're finished, once you have all your pieces sewn together, then your binding is the same thing because you still have this edge out here that you'll fold twice and that is your binding. Now you can make your corners a straight fold like this or you can give it a little tuck and create keeps wanting to fall out on me. You can fold it to give it, there we go, a mitered look. And as you look a little closer to the one that we have finished here, you can see how the seams, that this is the one that was the whole row, how that is continuous, and how these are folded and sewn together in the short sections. And like I said, once again, this particular pattern is the Easy Diamond. With this technique, there are lots of great patterns out there and great sizes. The one on the table is a lap size, but they do make great table runners. So if you need a quick table runner, make, in this case, uh, 12 blocks. And you'll have your table runner ready for any occasion or a variety of patterns to create some wonderful looks. A couple other little samples I have is this and it's actually that one and then there's this one. So you can do a variety of things with your quilt as your go technique. Hope you enjoyed this video and check out our website junctionfabric.com. Thank you.